Greetings, my fellow friend, loads of sovereign thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to LL3 Podcast. My name is Craig Trans, reading from the beautiful, wild, wonderful mountain state. And today's date is Tuesday, September 8th, 2020. So let us be good. Thank you for tuning in. It's been a good period of time. I've been on limbo for a while. Just been um, pretty active. Working on the property. I helped purchase. Got a couple of homes. And don't worry. It's not a permanent spot. But I love it. I'm your own landlord. Not a damn thing people can say. What can I do to my, to my land? Took a good period of time. I have a good friend of mine too, put up each other for over 20 years. And you know, got a lot of um, differences at times, but we have our moments, but always make up. That's what friendship is. You have your ups and downs, just like marriage, family, etc. A lot of crazy insanity out there. People are being arrested in Australia. For not wearing their mask. Unlike Spain, they're flying over. Checking out people on the beach. Even South Florida. Trying to tell us to wear it. Even Yes Boy Sheriff Gregory Tony, Supposed to protect the rights of Broward County. There's another Oathbreaker. The pumpernickel version of his predecessor. Scott Israel. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I just get a good laugh. You got these clowns trying to tell us how to live and think. They can't even take care of themselves. Well, one thing for sure. It will always backfires when they least expect it. You got all these demented, synthetic, Unmerited movements funded by banksters, technocrats, multinational corporations. They have their Marxist faction here, and they got the so called patriots on the other side. The fund the police, back to blue. It's like a ping pong ball. And I always like dawns on me on how all this faction game came about. It's been happening for a very very long time, my friends. Doesn't matter where you're at. Same crap, different day, location, package. Try to sell you a bundle of recycled pus and said, it came from scratch. It's brand spanking new. And you got the clowns that hate Trump. They want Biden to win. The mention zombie that he is. Rico Axe number one fan. New World Order's butt boy. And of course Donald Trump. Owned by APAC. Israeli intelligence. Sheldon Adelson. It just laughs. It makes me just, I just get, like if Trump farts, all hell breaks loose, right? So you see, it's a faction game. And it's derisive. And folks out there, not all, but a great amount are indulging on it. Get their rocks off. Think they're all became political experts. Please. You better learn more on the truth and history before jumping on some pretentious bandwagon. What can you say? You choose your own destinies, folks. Your rights have always been natural born. They can say whatever they want. We're going to take them for you. When they do that, you target them as treasonous. 
enemies of that particular movement aforementioned makes them proud makes them more less patriotic than Benedict Arnold so that's how always got to see things not to say it's been a while to run my mouth but it's okay I think I really like it I was like scooping around here it's got the internet in this place Got to see how it goes. Learning a few things here and there. Got to fix on my power. But so far, I'm in uh, good shape. Looking through the censored news. And just stuff going on here. California's request a federal emergency order to avert blackouts. This is on life site. Pro-LGBT priest tells clergy to stop saying voting for Biden is a mortal sin. <laughs> ah, please. Another poser on parade. Walking anti-matter. Yep, and of course, Cuomo launches social distancing task force to medically terrorize New Yorkers, even at restaurants. Like follow like son. Mini Mario, I call him. I bet you Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo's example of a fine Italian is Benito Mussolini. Yeah. Yep, I just... Dawns on me. Of course, Natural News got a couple things on Bellum, Burning Murder, Black Lives Matter, Marxist Group, Funded by a multinational corporation than technocrats. <laughs> and idolizing the man who hated black people. Oh, yeah. Tells you how intelligent some of these jerk offs are. How Pama the ones with the biggest mouths, has the dishpan hands. Pomalibus, indeed. A lot of competitions happening here. Got to take a dump on them. That'd be a great thing to do. Yeah, I know I'm ranting. And it's all good. Before I proceed here, I will add this up, put this on my footnotes. Architects and engineers for 9 11 Truth doing justice rising. And according to this, it um, starts on September 11th, 12th, starts on the 10th of September 11th. It ends through the 13th, and it says here, Justice Rising 9-11 in 2020. Architects and engineers for 9-11 Truth is thrilled to present Justice Rising an online conference for continued, for continued struggle for 9-11 justice and destructive trajectory of the post-9-11 world. The conference will run from Friday, September 11th to Sunday, to, to September 13th, making 19th anniversary of that day that changed our world so profoundly. Conference will go for three hours each day. And will be open to all free of charge. I encourage everyone to check it out. I'm one of them. I have to be there to see it for myself. So I gotta actually do a little ticker. And um, there's a lot of stuffs happening about the the ads. So get the ads out, spread it, share it. Remember, it's brought to you from your foes of the new world order. Damn straight. And of course, you're gonna have folks out there, are be talking on September 11th, saying the radical Muslims are involved. So-called, many of them are the victims that probably got bought and paid for. It's like happening USS Liberty. Here, take, do you take this? This do do as you take it. When you take this money, you do as you told for your own good. Surrounded what happened when I studied about the USS Liberty. You folks should check that out as well if you haven't. So, yeah, so there'll be a lot of uh, posters on here, downloading. So I'll encourage everyone to check out the event. And Richard Gage is very good. I will give him kudos. I have met the man a while back, around Memorial Day weekend. I would say about four, three, four years ago. Yeah, down, down in, my, um, down in uh, Miami, uh, Miami Shores area. And I have to go a shout-out to 
Erickson Harrell? Yeah, I they, guess they him, Erickson Harrell. Yeah, good good chap. I believe he retired from the North Miami Beach Police Department. He was a um, 9-11 truther as well and good guy. Met him, met his, met his girlfriend, beautiful children. Blessings to you, my friend. Hopefully you're doing well. And one day we shall meet again, do some dinner or lunch, just mingle. But um, okay, so, you know, enough of that. What's going on in the sense of news? Mike Adams always enjoy his stuff. I recommend folks too to check out Global Reset. Just um, type, subscribe on your email. You, you download his stuff, PDF format, and then you can, if you want to deal with his voice, I have to hear it for all nine hours. You got you got plenty of time to review it, do your own pace, and it's pretty damn cool. And speaking of New World Order, this one came from LifeSite LifeSiteNews.com. And, of course, it says here, Pope Francis's new encyclical due out October to cover human fraternity. Yeah, a lot of guys who likes to kiss feet and uh, blows global penis. For the Vatican City, it says here, Pope Francis will proclamate a new encyclical on fraternity on October 3rd. On John Joseph's birthday from Cro-Mags. JM, right? <laughs> I gotta say JM now because that settlement they had him and Carly Flanagan, which I'm not condemning either of them. So let's hear it. The Pontiff will sign and syllable entitled Fertil to Tea, Brothers All, in the city of Assisi. The birthplace of St. Francis after celebrating a private mass at the saint's tomb. According to the press conference of the Holy See, the document will address fraternity and social friendship. The official title of the document is apparently in refer a reference to a passage of a document St. Francis wrote for the brothers of, of his order. In Adominate Admonim Am uh, Admonition 6 of the Limitation of the Lord, the great saint asked his companions to consider the good shepherd. Let us all, brothers, consider the good shepherd to save his sheep. Bore the suffering the cross of the cross. The sheep of the Lord followed him in tribulation and persecution and shame. In hunger and thirst and infamity. Infirmity, excuse me. And temptations and all other ways. And for these things they have received an everlasting life from the Lord. Wherefore, it is a great shame for us, the servants of God, that whereas the saints have practiced works, we should expect to receive honor and glory for reading and preaching the same. This is the third encyclical of Pope Francis's pontificate. Vatican News, an official news site of the Holy See, stated that fraternity is a central theme of the, con of the current pontificate. On the evening of this election to the papacy, papacy on 13th March 2013, Pope Francis first greeted the world with the word brothers. Vatican News accurately recalled. The theme of fraternity is also present in his constant embrace of migrants epitomized in his pastoral visit in Lampedusa in Sicily. It continued. His signing of the document on human fraternity in Abu Dhabi in 2019 marks one more example of Pope Francis's dedication to promoting brotherly love. Pope Francis' support for illegal immigration of Asians and Africans to Italy has not found favor with many Italians and leading to a significant drop in his popularity in Italy from an 88% approval rating shortly after his election to 71% in 2018. Go figure. Pope Francis is a Club of Rome glam boy. Just like Justin Trudeau, Prime Minister of Canada. They think alike and smell the same and their rhetoric is totally lame. All right, and we'll continue on here. The pontiff signing of the document of human fraternity in Abu the hobby set to ortho, set orthodox theologians' teeth on, on edge as the documents claim that the 
pluralism and diversity of religions is willed by God. After a backlash from bishops and theologians who argue that his statements contradicts church teachings, including the first commandment, Pope informally clarified that God's permissive will have allowed other religions to proliferate. More than one Pope Francis critics have warned that the fraternity enshrined in the Abu Dhabi document most more closely aligns with Freemasonry than with the gospel. Shortly after Pope Francis and Grand Imam Ahmad Al Tayyib signed a document, Professor Roberto De Medi, the president of the Rome based Lepanto Foundation told LifeSite News that fraternity is a core value of semi-secret society. Freemasonry is also do- fraternity is also dogma Freemasonry, which it is the ideology and rituals offers a parody of Christian doctrine and liturgy. Damati wrote, "It's no coincidence that the Grand Lodge of Spain, with this tweet, thanked Pope Francis for his message of." December 25th, 2018, Todos los Mansiones del Mundo Si Yenen a la Petición del Papa por la Fortunidad. Hopefully, I'm not butchering the language here. Entrada personas de diversas religiones. So, it's all Freemasons of the world. World, the world joined the Pope's request for fraternity between people of different religions. Spanish Freemasons stated that Pope Francis's call for the triumph of universal fraternity among all human beings demonstrated a departure from the content of Humanium, Genesis 1884, the last great Catholic condemnation, condemnation of Freemasonry. In reality, Freemasonry continues to be condemned by the church, even if the men of the church at the highest level seem to embrace its ideas. Dan Matete wrote, But the teaching of the diverse masters continues to resound in faithful hearts. They're a love for one neighbor who only can be based on a love for God. And without reference to the true God, which only can be loved within the church's ark, of salvation, fraternity is only empty word that conceals hatred of God and neighbor. Subsequent to the signing of the Abu Dhabi document, plans for the construction of a monument to human fraternity were announced. The House of Abrahamic Family will unite a Christian church, a Jewish synagogue, and an Islamic mosque in one architectural project. As the news, Archbishop Carlo Bangor expressed his dismay. You know, like... Interesting here because mostly like the sons of Abraham, Abrahamic ordeal here. In the garden of Abu Dhabi, the temple of the world, Senatricate neo religion is about to arise with this anti Christic dogmas. Not even most hopeful most hopeful of the Freemasons would have imagined so much. Former Papal Papal Nasio wrote Saint Francis of Assassi famously attempted to embrace martyrdom of the 13th century by preaching the gospel to Muslims. According to St. Bonaventure, the Caliph of Egypt was so impressed by St. Francis's bold attempt to convert him that he offered him many costly gifts, which the saint refused. The encounter ended in a draw. St. Francis could not convert the Caliph, and the Caliph would not execute St. Francis. And the Pavarolo Pavarolo went back onto the regions of the faithful. So, interesting here. One of those things, folks. Another step to a one world religion. Of course, the Vatican is part of the global institution. And once again, Pope Francis made another Global move. And I've never impressed by this clown by any means. I remember watching a video many years ago. He spoke at the House of Chambers in Washington, D.C. 
And many of the elected representatives look like little children, zombified, fascinated, big smiles on their faces like they're in daycare, um, nursery school once again. The man's a hack. Kissing feet of certain people. That whole trend. So we should all follow him. <laughs> Meek and unmeritable. This son of a bitch is. Another poser. In disguise. That's what I say about Pope Francis. I can really give two craps about his. In Senegal. Toilet paper is more intriguing than that. And don't get me wrong. I'm not anti-Christian. When it comes to statism and trying to use Christ, it's blasphemy. This is an example. I'm trying to make it all into reality. I tell everyone out there that still have the Catholic faith, give this man, he's not your Pope. I just hate to say that. You know what? The truth does hurt. Uh, enough said about this poser. And I got this one here. It came from naturalnews.com. American Airlines may be bending over, just like Joe Biden in that position, or Bernie Sanders. <laughs> so I said American Airlines now endorses terrorism, violence, arson, and murder by encouraging employees to wear BLM propaganda buttons. You mean Bellum? Yeah, Bellum. Some demonic plague. This is what Ethan Huff has to say. Came out today as well. And it says here Air Travel Giant American Airlines has altered its company's policy to allow flight attendants to wear Black Lives Matter pins and other associated bling to work on their work uniforms. I say, hey, to all you folks out there who work for American Airlines, I dare you wear the triple threat button. That has the American flag and the Confederate flag and a 45 degree angle diag. And right in the middle of it is the Gaddison says, Don't tread on me. Let's see how many people get up, will get up, find it offensive. I find it honorable to be very fact. With all due respect, and I'll continue on here. Show of support for all rioting, looting, and other violence taking place in cities all across the country. AA is lifting restrictions that previously required its employees. Remain neutral about hot political issues like BLM while on duty. Bellum, Bellum, want the satanic Bellum, Bellum, yeah, yo, yeah, I want the darkness in me. Bellum, Bellum, you know, it's the same, it's Bellum. So I'll go on here. In the company announcement, AA suggested that we now live in a time where it's so important to have a dialogue about this important issue of racism in our society and to try to find common ground. I want them to think for me. And the best place for that, apparently, is while well, masked and in flight. Shahira Law Light does it again. America is truly committed to having an inclusive culture that is welcoming to all and a reflection of our country and world. The statement goes on to explain. This is why America is so committed in creating a more tolerant and diverse team through our partnership with America's Office of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, we are continuing to work through the overall plan for addressing these issues in our workplace. Part of the plan is also created an official AA symbol that supports Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and other woke causes for employees to wear while they serve air travelers drinks and pretzels. Let me tell you something, folks. If you're in a union and you're wearing, and they want you to wear these particular buttons, remember, if communism takes over, the unions will be smashed first. They'll smash them to the last drop of blood. If that's what you want to represent, and you're a union person, pro-labor, then you're a hypocrite. Okay? And you could tell that to those douchebags. Uh, just like the Ku Klux Klan. They're going to support the KK, another KKK pumpernickel brand. Okay? So I'm going to continue on here. 
In addition, the company is also working to design its own pin that shows its symbolic support of diverse and inclusive work environment, AAA says. American Airlines is so committed to fighting racism that it's hiring only black people to design uniform pin. <laughs> wow. What would you say about that? Just in, in just in case these changes are inadequate, AA has decided to go a step further in the fight against racism by hiring only black people from its professional black network design company's new uniform pin. No white people will be on the design team because white people are bad and black people are good. Racist, racist, KKK attributes. Racist, racist, KKK attributes. All right. So I uh, will continue on here. No white people will design because white people, yep, I'll continue on. Only black people can lead the way into a new anti-racist world. In other words, where whiteness is fully extinguished, true and pure equality takes its place. Her conformity 101. The airline said it's showing for black co colleagues who have experienced discrimination and injustice and not in any particular organization, report NBC5. Yeah, but I'm a white guy. I've been profiled and been discriminated. But that's called exceptionalism. In the immediate aftermath of the George Floyd incident, which you all finally we got more information that he died from a um, high dosage of frenanol. But don't say that. AA publicly announced that demonstrations, aka, AKA right and looting, highlight the urgent need for a systemic change because black lives matter. But everyone else, the hell with you. And if you stand for what's right, you have liberty minded values, and you're a black person, they can give two craps about you. Ha 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 ha. The truth really hurts. Not everyone who works for AA is happy about these changes, though. One company flight attendant reportedly told the New York Post that she takes seriously a serious offense to the new BLM pin rule as her husband is a law enforcement officer. So, like I said, wear your triple threat pin instead, ma'am. As, as far as I'm concerned, All Lives Matter, this individual who has worked for the airline for many years wrote an email to AA senior management. I should be able to write to them, go... Why you want to support a synthetic movement that's funded by the multinational corporations, including technocrats, which is part of the One World Order. I completely disgust that the fact that we can, cannot show support for our God, our country, and our LEOs, which is law enforcement officers, when it comes to the BLM organization, which is controversial in itself, American Airlines is obviously different, she added. <coughs> bend over for management, bend over for authority, Turn the other cheek if they tread you over. All right, so to continue on here. Another flight attendant who goes by the name of John says they're not wearing a BLM pin under these new rules because could cause strife among employees. I could say grievances too. Screw it. Fight. Get a union and fight these damn things. Those who choose not to support BLM domestic terrorism will be ostracized and labeled as racist. How does it feel to be a bigot? Have the mindset of the KKK. Yes, the dark tan version of David Duke and Michael Spencer. Congratulations, folks. Even though BLM is a terrorist organization that promotes violence to further their agenda, if the pin is sanctioned, I'll wear my NYPD pin and support the police department, John says. The latest news about multinational corporations like AA pandering to far left domestic terrorism can be found at politicalcorrectness.news. Yep, another bend over bobbing airline that loved to blow, get, give these people a blow job. And you know, I like to kind of use too much vulgarity, but this is how dumb and stagnant and pathetic these idiots are. Okay? But they don't want you to think for yourself. They don't even wear a cowbell right in there. You represent walking antimatter. Bellum, bellum, bellum. Bellum, bellum, bellum. That's right, but if. Remember, but Karl Marx was a racist. But that's exceptional. Look, plain and simple, folks. Get them where it hurts. And then, you know what? It'd be better buying their stocks if you could put your two cents in. 
I go, hey, could we have could we have the Ku Klux Klan flags out there too? Where's my? I love Adolf Hitler pin. Where is that? Uh, is for American Airlines. See how they react. Oh, well, quote the Confederate flag. They all ah! they all wig out. But this is exceptional. Bellum. I'd be called Bellum. <laughs> so hey, how the whole thing is this, folks? They need us more. We need them. Piss on these people. These fools, you know. Huey and Dewey. Well, I'll be one more thing here. Let's say what the heck. This one came from law enforcement today. No, leave me alone. I don't want, I don't want any advertising. All right. And of course, Sleepy Joe Biden. What family need to know? Joe Biden plans to abolish the bourbon communities with his Section 8 housing plan. So you're going to tell other communities how to think. Huh. What a bend over Bob. Uh, was Camilla Harris that good in bed or just got a handshake? <laughs> this editorial is brought to you by the staff for LA for law enforcement today. And we have to say here. Well-known Demo- Democrat presidential candidate Joe Biden has a $640 billion housing plan on the table that designed to force suburban communities to have low-income and multifamily housing complexes in place. He is bragging that he supports of Wall- the support of Wall Street for his plan while visiting Kenosha, Wisconsin, where riots and violence have been raging over the last several weeks. Biden boasted it to his support that Wall Street supports his housing plan because it will increase that GDP. Biden said, And by the way, it is not a waste of money. Said to like a zombie. Even the folks on Wall Street point out that that will increase the GDP might get grow. People will do better. People will do better. Wow. And of course here, you know, what Mike says here, Biden destroys some suburbs if elected, mandatory low-income housing, and new lawless scenes in urban areas recently. Donald Trump says suburban voters are pouring into the Republican Party because of the violence in Democrat-run cities and states. If Biden gets in, this violence is coming to the suburbs, and fast you can say goodbye to your American dream. You know what I say? Give the middle finger. Tenth Amendment. President Trump, 10th Amendment. Even to Rico Act's number one fan, Joe Biden, as well. So, and as it continues on here, we're just going to see what they have to say here. Under Biden's plan, there would be an increase in Section 8 housing vouchers while requiring suburban communities to make various maneuvers to comply with new regulations in order to obtain federal grants. The plan provides a $300 million investment to give states and, locali- and localities the technical assistance and planning support they need to eliminate exclusionary zoning policies and other regulations that contribute to sprawl. So he's going to do that federal overreach, which James Madison warned us in in Federalist Papers 46. Please, folks, read it. And, and I continue on here. According to Breitbart, communities unwilling to eliminate their zoning laws to allow multi multifamily mixed income housing developments in their neighborhoods would be shut out of federal grants under Biden's plan. Well, where do you get these federal grants from? The states. Oh, really? So the states can give them the big middle finger, plain and simple, or penile microphone. Wow, well, what's that? Exclusionary zoning has for decades been strategically used to keep people of color and low-income families out of certain communities. As President Biden will enact enact legislation requiring any state receiving federal dollars to develop a strategy for exclusionary zoning as proposed in the House and the Home Act of 2019 by Majority Majority Whip Claiborne and Senator Cory Booker. Yeah, one of the dumbest men in the Senate. And not a real sharp mayor of Newark, New Jersey. Another ass clown, right? He's no Dr. Walter Williams. He's a poser. <laughs> Betsy McCarthy, the former lieutenant governor of New York, has called Biden's housing plan disastrous. 
for suburban families who would see dense housing developments appear in their communities at a rapid pace. And of course, the uh, Stephen How um, Howard sent this tweet out: Joe Biden uh, touts Wall Street support for the plan to abolish American suburbs via Breitbart News. Biden doesn't have a housing plan. This is a Democrat plan to beater control the freedom-loving conservatives outside the nation's cities. It's left his power grab. And he probably agree from a teleprompter, of course. In July, McGoffey wrote, Biden's plan is to force suburban towns with single-family homes and minimum lot sizes to build high-density affordable housing back in the middle of their leafy neighborhoods. Local preference and local control be damned. Top it off, Biden's plan to expand illegal and illegal immigration. Yes, another Club of Rome agent himself. A new world order, but boy, coupled with a low, coupled with low housing in, uh, income housing, will prove to be a disastrous combination for the working class suburban communities who look for safe and quiet places for their families to live. It doesn't matter what, in, in regards to the color of skin. All right, here's more about the antics of Joe Biden's campaign that law enforcement today broke to you this week. Washington D.C. Isaac Devere is a reporter for the Atlantic. On Friday, he attended a press conference with the hermit-like president, candidate Joe Biden. Biden's staff gave DeVere the opportunity to ask the first question of after Biden's opening remarks. DeVere was asked on Twitter if he coordinated the question in advance with the Biden campaign. So far, if he hasn't denied it. And, of course, De- DeVere's question was related to a story published the day before the Atlantic in which the president was accused of making careless and intensive and sensitive remarks about World War I veterans. The article makes it obviously that liberals who despise the president's very existence have never had a very good ammunition used against them. Use it, use what they little they had they had a long time ago, and have been working with hopes and prayers ever since. Prayers that is to the twin dark chantry in spite, and of course you know we can go on and on and on on this whole ordeal. It's the questions honest. And you know what? I could really care less what this clown has to say. But Joe Biden sucks, okay? And I'm not a big Trump lover myself. But I'll be very confoundly fair. When you witch hunt people, you can't be called out. So um, you can read this all on your own here. But he's, he's, And it's funny. I got one here. It said Jeffrey Goldberg, based on the words of four anonymous people with uh, first hand knowledge, each of the comments. Supposedly made by Trump, that president without context is an excellent way to manipulate meaning, such as when reporters said of Trump after Charlottesville United the right rally that the president failed to condemn racist at the event. He don't have to, because it was staged. So she orchestrated, and both sides that were hired were fighting amongst each other. Okay? And of course, I'll say it once again, blood's in the hands of the city of Charlottesville for letting them stand down and breaching, by breaching, Jason Kessler's contract, the permit. You can look it up yourselves, folks. Look at the um, event permit under the city of Charlottesville, what, uh, Virginia. Self-explanatory. Open records law, okay? So, I want to be enough talking about this guy, Joe Biden. When I puke or take a dump, I find that more... Admirable. Okay? Judge them by their actions. That's all I do. No exceptions. And you know what? You can read the rest of this article on your own. I'm done. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share through your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or if you say something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the quorum. For the more, I shall leave the footnotes of these um, episodes on my speaker page. You could uh, do, do a donation. That would be awesome. And support these sites too as well. You can hit me at paypal.me forward slash Loki Luck number three. Find me on Facebook, Twitter. Just search engine it. You'll find me. And I'm like hitting all these show, all these sites now. And uh, I can admire, I think everyone out there in India, all my listeners in India, shout out to you. Thank you. I've been, I've been keeping tabs, and um, I think it's very cool. So, 
have the voice go around the world. All right, once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that demoniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.